many of us who go into counseling or the helping professions have a deep desire to be helpful, to be the person who offers assistance, who uh, allows for the relief of suffering, the uh, alleviation of problems that, that are perplexing and difficult. We want to be that person that perhaps was not there for us in our time of need as a child. If we went through a painful event or a trauma and had no one big to support us or to um, comfort us, to encourage us, we may grow up with this desire to be that strong presence, that big person to make things right. Sadly, a lot of people who are hurt by someone in their life who is larger than them, um, if they were a child and molested by an uncle, for instance, it's tempting to believe that because a person bigger than me that I could not uh, measure up to, I could not stand up to, did me damage, that the, the resolution or the remedy for that damage is to find um, not a big person who will hurt me, but a big person who is benevolent, who will help me to heal from that thing that I suffered at the hands of someone who had more power than I did. So when, when people reach out to someone like me, uh, a physician, a psychiatrist, a counselor, they're often looking for someone to make it right. Let's say they had an uncle that was uh, exploitive of them or a father that was distant or withholding. They may come to me thinking that I will help make amends for the trauma, the difficulty, the deprivation, the loss that they suffered in life. And because I want to be helpful, it's tempting to allow them to invest in me that power to save them or to help them. And to tell the truth, there were times when I got hooked by that. I actually um, brought a young woman home from the hospital who was being discharged. Um, I called my wife and said, she has nowhere to go. Can we let her stay with us? Um, turns out she ended up uh, attempting suicide in our bathroom. <laughs> and I had to take her back to the hospital, to the emergency room, and confess that yes, indeed, I had allowed a patient to come home with me. Um, it was quite embarrassing and I was fearful that I might be kicked out of my residency program. I say that only to say that um, it is only through trial and error sometimes that we realize that if we bite on the hook of um, someone's idealization of us or, or putting us on a pedestal, that we can set ourselves up for pain and them as well. You know, Jesus was so amazing in his connection with people because even though he had great power and people came to him looking to him for healing or, or sustenance, um, he would regularly remind them, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. According to your faith, be it done unto you. He made it very clear that if there was good that happened, it was because faith was activated in them. And so for me, as a physician, as a counselor, I am very quick to put the locus of control, the, the, the place where things happen inside the individual and not in the strength, the wisdom, the authority, or the power that I possess. Um, it turns out that that when someone is idealized, we invest them with, um, in some ways, godlike qualities, and they will inevitably fall short of God. Um, I like to see myself as an instrument or a vehicle of God's grace, a servant of God. But I want to make it clear that whatever value that I impart to someone is simply as a servant of God, as a minister of God's grace to them. When someone says to me, 
you're the only one who understands me. I get a little nervous if they say, but you're the only one that can help me. Once again, I'm a little nervous because I want to be clear with them and within myself that whatever value is transmitted is because they open their heart um, and their mind to fresh possibilities that God can provide for them, whether it be uh, emotional healing or um, healing of an old trauma. I want to make sure that they understand that although I may be an instrument of God's grace in their life and give them strategies and direction um, and blessing that can help them to feel empowered and to take action that will bring healing. And, uh, for instance, Jesus said to the paralytic, take up your bed and walk. He gave him a directive that released God's power and healing in his life. But Jesus, once again, is quick to put the, the, uh, the place of that power within the person. He often would say, um, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's, it's right here. It's, it's within your grasp. He also said the kingdom of God is within you. So for each of us, um, that healing that we seek, even if we were harmed by someone bigger than us, we need to grow to be able to take a stand against that evil, that we become the big person who can reject the uh, consequences of that trauma and if possible, um, rebuke the person who harmed us to put that sin, as it were, at the foot of the person who perpetrated it. Sometimes that's impossible because that because that person is dead. We don't know where they where they reside. Um, but if it is possible to write a letter, have a conversation, to um, to make a direct statement to that person that what you did was profoundly wrong and had far-reaching negative impact on me, we owe it to ourselves and actually to God and that person to put the burden back where it belongs. Very often when something shameful is done to us, if the person who does it does not repent and, and take responsibility for the wrong, for they don't feel shame, then the person who is dumped on uh, or abused or uh, treated wrongfully will often take on that shame and internalize that feeling that it was my fault. Um, and so as that, as that, um, that trauma is plays out, we may, we may find ourselves in repeated situations where the same kind of dynamic occurs, giving us an opportunity to revisit the pain, the trauma, the difficulty, but come up with a different solution, a solution that allows us to see ourselves as mighty and not as powerless in the face of that evil. Um, we, we often have to practice um, with littler things. Um, when, when David, um, who eventually became king, um, was learning to uh, use a sling, a sling to cast stones, I imagine he, he used um, trees or rocks or um, other objects to practice on so that he got better and better so that when, when his sheep were attacked by a lion at one point and a bear at another point, he was prepared to take them down. And that preparation and that experience of victory then empowered him when Goliath uh, threatened to, um, to, to challenge any person in Israel to, to do hand-to-hand -hand combat. David was ready to say, hey, God gave me the bear. God gave me the, the lion and God will give me this uncircumcised Philistine. We need to understand that um, God is the, is the author of all wisdom, all healing, all power, 
and that rather than looking for someone bigger than we are to do the work, to change or transform or heal us, that it's inviting God to begin to change our view of ourselves so that we are no longer a victim, but victorious. We have not been overcome by evil, but we overcome evil by doing good. And my job as a counselor is to help empower that person to stand up, to um, stop sitting in their weakness or despair or despondency or victimhood and see themselves as empowered and able to take that stand. So when somebody comes back to me and says, wow, you're helping me so much, Dr. Looney. Um, I did what you said and it worked. It was, it was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm very quick to say, hey, I gave you a suggestion. The fact that you put it into practice and the fact that it had a good impact is all on you. That's you taking the um, offering that I give you and putting it to use in a way that allows you to overcome and to um, step into a new way of being. So often it's our judgments of ourselves that keep us feeling weak, disempowered, foolish, um, unworthy. And as a counselor, I want to change that self-concept and that inner dialogue so that I don't see myself as broken or at least not broken in, a, in the sense that keeps me from engaging life to the full. And it's such a great thing when people decide that they're ready to face the, face the, the enemy, to engage the battle. And so often I've encouraged people as they go through the healing journey to address the wrong that was done them um, to the person who perpetrated the crime in the form of a, a conversation, a phone call, or a letter. Um, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of letter writing. But even if the person who was responsible for the evil um, denies that it occurred or dismisses it or takes no responsibility, is not repentant, having had your say, putting the, 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 the responsibility at the foot of the person who did the damage is so freeing. Because if you're carrying around that responsibility, if you haven't spoken the truth, if you haven't corrected the person, Jesus says, if your brother sins against you, rebuke him. If he repents, forgive him. So that rebuke is something that we can only do with support, with co good coaching, sometimes with counseling, um, someone who helps us to see that we don't have to stay in that weakened position forever. So as I said before, be careful if you enjoy being that big person to um, make things better, to bring resolution or healing. God is the healer. We are simply vessels of his grace, of his mercy, of his strength and compassion. Um, we want to impart his courage to people to live life uh, to the full, to do the things that reflect godliness and um, the goodness of God. So hope this is helpful. Um, I believe that humility is what keeps us from thinking more highly of ourselves than we ought. It allows God to stay at the center. And if, uh, if a person says, I don't know what I would have done without you, Dr. Looney, I often will say something like, well, my belief is that if you had not found me, God would have made another provision for you. There's an old saying that when the student is ready, the teacher will come. And so whether whether the, the person that comes to you gets healing or not often depends on their readiness and, um, of course, your willingness to speak the truth in love, to draw from what God gives you and be generous with it. When you do, God can do 
good thing. I'm not the best person for everybody, but I'm the best person for some if they're at the right place at the right time and, and ready for help. God will give it. God bless you as you serve others and as you take up the challenge to be victorious, to be an overcomer, to see yourself as strong um, even when you're weak. That's a, 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 tr a transition that changes everything and allows you to face every day with the confidence that no matter how badly I fail, God will work in whatever circumstance or action to bring about good if I continue to turn it over to him, to surrender to him, and to just take one moment at a time seeking for knowledge of his will and the power to carry it out. God bless you. Love you.